Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. We're a webinar, a webcast, uh, whatever you want to call us. Um, we'll recover anything that may be of interest to uh, libraries and librarians. Um, the show is free and open to anyone to watch. Um, we do them live on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. All of our recordings are available on our website, um, so you can go there and see everything that we've done over the years. Um, watch recordings, get the PowerPoint presentations available, any interesting links that were related to shows, handouts, we put all of that there on our um, archives. Uh, we do a mixture of things here, presentations, book reviews, mini training sessions, interviews. Um, as I said, as if it's library related, we are happy to have it on the show. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that come on, on the show and do presentations. And we sometimes have guest speakers, as we have this morning, which is some um, we have um, next to me someone from another commission, <laughs> Nebraska Library Commission. We are um, from the Nebraska Public Service Commission. Uh, Colin Robbins hi, um, is here. And I don't have on here what your ex your title is. And well, it's even... kind of long. So... <laughs> It's That's IT, why not telecom, there either. <laughs> GIS analyst for the commission. So I, I work in the telecommunications uh, department of the, mm -hmm. of the commission. So. Cool. Okay. Great. And mm -hmm. he's going to share with us um, this great broadband um, map that I've looked at before that we're that they're trying to put together for Nebraska to see what's going on with broadband across the state, um, and a new mobile app too that Correct. is the same kind of info. So um, I'm just going to hand over you to take it away and tell us all, all right, about uh, what we're doing with broadband oh, in Nebraska. Did. Thanks, Krista. Um, I'll just, yeah, start by kind of telling you what we're going to go over. We'll start with a broadband map, and, and I'll show you kind of how, how that was developed and how it works and some of the features that it has that, would, that will potentially be useful. And then after that, I'll go into our, our mobile phone app and why we have that and how we can use help from the public for that. Mm -hmm. So um, we're kind of trying to spread the word on... on on what that is, and I'll go into detail on that a little later. So I thought to start, I'd first define what broadband is, because sometimes there's kind of a misconception about what we're talking about when when we uh, talk about broadband. And really, what it is is the ability to transmit a lot of data or information from place to place. A lot of people kind of get mixed up with the internet, and I kind of like to think of uh, broadband as kind of an analogy would be like the road system. You know, highways and interstates are used to move a lot of different things quickly and more efficiently than, say, a, you know, a single road or a, a city road. So for broadband, it's moving that those larger amounts of information from place to place. And the Internet is really just uh, something that utilizes the broadband network. So it'd be like you know, trucking or something. Mm -hmm. It's something that uses the, the network, but um, they're not really the same thing. So um, another way that a lot of people define broadband is by speed. So, and that's, it's kind of hard to come to a concrete definition of, of what broadband is by speed because that's always changing. For a long time, it was just considered anything faster than a dial-up connection. Um, when you're you know, when you're accessing the internet, that the NAT network, if it was faster than dial-up, would be considered a broadband uh, connection. But mm -hmm. um, anymore, you see things like three megabyte download, one megabyte up is considered broadband. Or some uh, the FCC is talking about defining broadband as ten megabyte download, right. and I think it was two, four up or something like that. So uh, it's always changing, but. Really, I guess the main idea is that um, when you're moving large amounts of information, uh, broad, the broadband network is what supports that. And so most people use the Internet on a broadband network, but that's not the only thing that those networks are used for. I mean, any more phone calls are made on a lot of times on a broadband network. So just want to define that and make sure it's kind of clear what we're, what we're talking about. Um, our, let's see, I'll advance the slide here. There we go. Yeah. I've got to make sure I keep up with the, the <laughs> slides. Uh, so the project that we have been working on since 2010 um, is is obviously centered around broadband, but 
It's a project that was developed through the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act um, in 2010. And the project involved uh, grants that were given to the states, and then the uh, states were charged with helping to integrate broadband and information technology into the state and local economies. So in Nebraska, uh, I believe the governor designated the Public Service Commission as the entity that would carry out that that project. Um, and that project really in, involves two separate things, a, a planning piece and a mapping piece. And we realized, the commission realized pretty quickly that we were not suited to be able to carry out all those things at once. So we enlisted the help of um, the University of Nebraska, the Department of Economic Development, uh, AIM, and uh, the NITC. So they're they're largely involved in the in the planning piece. And I think it was maybe a month or two ago you had Charlotte Nargis and Connie yes, Hancock on, mm -hmm. and they are uh, very involved in that planning side. And we are we are involved in that a little bit, but we kind of take the forefront on the mapping side, so, which is kind of what we're, what we're here to talk about. So, um, Is there a similar type thing going on in other states across the country? Yeah, there are uh, several different states that have do really the same thing. You know, every state did it a little differently, mm -hmm. depending on who the grant was given to. Right. It wasn't always given to, you know, like Public Service Commission, mm -hmm. like it was in this state, other entities. Um, were given that money. So each state was kind of allowed to customize it as they see fit. But, uh, you know, some of the requirements besides the planning side were to have a statewide map. So you can go out and see similar maps for other states as well. Um, uh, so in Nebraska, uh, the, the mapping piece developed um, kind of gradually, but the way that it's done is that twice a year we request data from providers throughout the state uh, asking them to, to provide us data about where they provide broadband throughout the state, uh, what type, what speeds and what type of, of service they provide. And so we collect that information twice a year. It's collected at the census block level. So, you know, if you provide, if a provider provides service in a census block, that essentially says, yes, that census block is served and we uh, report that. And then uh, twice a year we collect that data, put it all together, and we've uh, developed the website to display that and make it uh, usable for, for anybody to log on. So uh, we'll, I'll show you a demonstration here. The, the site, just for your reference, is broadbandmap.nebraska.gov. You'll see it, see it listed at the top of the page there. Okay, let me switch over here. Is that good okay on the mm -hmm. screen? Yep, okay. that's good. Yep. So this is the site itself. So when you first log in, there's actually a little disclaimer that you click on and agree to. It's just uh, telling you kind of what you're going to be looking at. Um, and you'll see on the left side, there's a series of tabs here uh, with features below it. And then on the right side, you see the map of the state. Um, so the first thing that you see again is with the Start Here tab. And really what this whole uh, set of features is used for is to look up by address or by a pin drop or by your, your city or county what, who the providers are for that area. So for example, I will, let's see, choose a, a town here randomly. So we chose Unadilla, Nebraska. Um, when you do that, it brings up a list, a couple of lists on the left side of the screen there. Uh, there's a provider list and a services available list. So under the providers list, it shows you all of the providers that say they provide service for that municipality. Uh, so for example, on this, you see Viasat. When you hover over the provider, You'll see the little window on the map pop up. It tells you what type of, of service they provide and also a link to their website in case you want to uh, actually follow up and look into the information on what type of service they provide. So Viasat is satellite, for example. Uh, Zito Media, as you see there, is a cable provider. Um, 
Future Technologies is a fixed wireless provider. Um, all of the mobile um, mobile wireless companies will, that serve that area will, will come up. So, for example, U.S. Cellular, you see there, there's probably uh, there's Windstream and Verizon. You'll see on this in this example, Unite Private Networks shows up when they're in a different color. That's kind of highlighted. Uh, that typically means that they provide business services only. So that's something to keep in mind as you're looking through there. And um, Unite, uh, for example, provides fiber-based services to, to the user. So that's you're talking about kind of your highest speeds available. Those aren't always available to uh, just the general public, but mm -hmm. businesses can often uh, access them. So again, that's... This is a good way to pick a new service provider, maybe. If you yes, to, yeah. For if, your library if you are <laughs> unhappy with your service at home, this is a very good way to figure out or what else is available. wondering if there's something better or cheaper out right. there. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And again, you can you can look up look that up by typing in your address if you want or drop in a pin. It, you're not uh, limited to only by city or county or whatever. So that's how you find out what services are available in your area. If you click on the coverage tab. You can start to investigate some of that data that was submitted to us. One thing to keep in mind is that when we uh, collect data from the providers, uh, we kind of we have an agreement with them that we don't necessarily want to uh, show their their footprint in detail because that's kind of proprietary information. So really, the way we get around that is that it'll show you when you're at a certain address what's available for that address, and then we show some generalized information that I'll show you here. But you'll never be able to say to look up, say, Windstream and see exactly where they serve throughout the state. Um, you could, I guess, you could kind of do that in a, in a backwards way, but it would take you a very long time to figure that all out. So anyway, uh, when you click on the coverage tab, uh, there's a number again a number of options that pop pop up. You can look at uh, statewide, and if, again, if you in the map piece, if you look click on the little globe, it'll bring you all the way back out to the the full state um, and those sliders and, and uh, magnifying glasses will help you navigate. Um, under coverage, you can you see the top piece, there's a number of different options. If you click on, for example, the wireless speed tier coverage, you can look at what the highest speeds available are for any given area. So you see for Nebraska, it shows up uh, Pretty high speeds are available are advertised as available for most of the state. See, there's a couple pockets in the sand hills that are mm -hmm. not covered. You can do the same thing for uh, wired speed tier coverage. It looks a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So these are your DSL cable fiber providers uh, that show up here. And again, you can always zoom in any piece of the any time. Um, and you can always toggle those selections off if you want to look at Certain different speeds. speeds. Yeah. Um, so that gives you some information about the coverage. And then if you're interested in, for example, where is fiber available throughout the state, that's always something that I, that I find pretty interesting to, to look at. You know, fiber is really the, you're looking at the highest speeds available. That's so what they're really trying that? to push now, is trying to get more fiber. Yes, yeah, that's kind of what a lot yeah. of a lot of uh, the providers are moving to, just because the speed, the capacity for speed is so much greater than mm -hmm. than the other uh, types. And really, um, you know, when you're talking cable and DSL, you're you're talking about a copper network, and copper is pretty expensive now. So it's mm -hmm. it actually, from a financial standpoint, I think makes more sense to lay fiber, but. Um, so I always like to click this on because I find it pretty interesting. You know, if you think maybe before you see this map about where do you think fiber is deployed in Nebraska, uh, most people would probably say, well, you know, big cities, and that's probably about it. But um, that's actually not the case, as you see on the map here. Yeah, I'm surprised. Omaha and Lincoln don't. And actually, you know, that's it's a little bit deceptive because Lincoln and Omaha, reason. yeah, if you do zoom in, you'll see that they do have some fiber deployment and uh, it's more on a on like a you know they see the actual fiber lines yeah. where they're located mm -hmm. in those cities but um and there you see omaha but again statewide you see a lot of these r pretty rural areas have fiber deployed and that's a lot of that's because these are are operated by 
kind of local companies um, that have been a little bit more progressive and have decided to really take advantage of some opportunities to deploy fiber throughout their, their territory. So um, it's pretty interesting to me that, that there are some places, very rural areas like, uh, for example, Clark's, Nebraska, I think they have, you can get fiber to the, they have fiber to the home. You know, if you live within the, the territory that that company serves, you can get uh, fiber service. So really v extremely high speed uh, connections in that area. Whereas I live in Lincoln um, in the south part of town and I don't have that option. I don't, there's no fiber provider that runs service to my house. So um, in a lot of ways, some of these rural areas are further ahead of even places in Lincoln, Omaha. So anyway, that's one thing that I always find is interesting to look at. You can also look at um, fixed wireless service. Fixed wireless service is kind of like uh, it's, it's um, kind of like having Wi-Fi at your home. It uses a little bit different technology, but that's at least the way to a way to think about it. Um, so you're not running a line into your house. You're you're getting service from uh, a, a, like a tower somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's not exactly the same tower as you would be from like your cell phone tower, but Kind of the same idea. So you can also look at mobile wireless coverage as a tab under there. And this is again all the companies kind of uh, kind of put together. So mm -hmm. you can't look at it necessarily by certain provider. And we'll get to why that's kind of interesting in a in a little bit when I talk about the the mobile app, because this is kind of what we try to address with that mobile app is to verify is this accurate and and why or why is it not. So. Um, the other options under coverage are kind of interesting. You can turn on community anchor institutions that will show you where your schools, libraries, hospitals, etc. are. Um, you can also turn on uh, the county and region uh, polygons, I guess I'll say, if you want, that show you where you're at within the state. Um, and you can toggle the transparency, excuse me, the transparency on those if you want. Um, under community anchors, you can switch on and off whatever you want. If you're only interested in libraries, for example, you can look only at libraries. Cool. Um, this, uh, again, this is data that we collect every, twice a year. So sometimes, and it's, I have to say, sometimes our community anchor institution data is a little bit behind everything else. So, um, uh, it's, you know, it's good, but they're, I'm not saying that we, it's perfect either. So keep that in mind as you look through it. If you have, you can always let me know if there are suggestions on that. Uh, so again, with the, the coverage tab, you can kind of look at our, look at the data a little, a little bit more in depth on, uh, and, you know, kind of investigate that. Under the speed test tab, that allows you to actually run a speed test at your location. If you're wondering, well, how fast is my connection at home, uh, or wherever you're at, you can you can do that. Um, you can, you know, if your your home computer, you just say find an address, type in your address, and it'll find your uh, location on on the map. Otherwise, you just use you can just use the push pin. So we can maybe test one here. I don't. I'm not sure if it'll. It requires some Java updates and stuff sometimes, but we'll test it out. Find this here. Talk to them. <clears throat> it asks you to to uh, put in your provider, and if you don't know, I always just put other. And if you don't know your technology, you can do that as well. It'll run the speed test. So this is actually going on to your computer and seeing what you are actually getting, yes. not that what your provider is telling you you Correct. can get. Yep. Yeah. So, <laughs> sometimes that is different. <laughs> right, it is. Oftentimes it is different. So you can see here at the library we have a pretty good connection. 79 yeah. mega, megabits per second is a very good connection. And I ran it upstairs in our office and it was over 100. So mm -hmm. good connections here. You've got a hardwire into that, I'm sure, yeah. Yes. But... For, you can see kind of how that's used uh, how or how you could use it if you wanted to. Um, 
So that's the speed test option. Um, also, if you need help, obviously the help tab will let you look up information. And the other uh, feature that I kind of wanted to point out is the, the feedback at the top. If you click on feedback, you can basically send an email. I think it come, it'll eventually come to me. You can type in questions or if you have issues. Uh, we always encourage people to use that. Um, or if you have issues with your internet at home, um, that's one way to, to at least ensure that we'll, we'll see what, what's going on there. So that's really the, the mapping site. Um, I have a question about it. Sure. Um, what's the criteria to make something an anchor institution? Oh, that's a good question. And I don't know that I know the answer. Um, I mean, some of them it's kind of obvious looking at those lists. If it's a school, it's a school. If it's a hospital, yeah. it's a hospital. But are there, can someone say, well, we're not on there and we think like the government ones maybe might be more? Um, I think there's probably a definition in, in that the NTIA has, has uh, uh, put yeah. forth on what is a community anchor institution. And I honestly, off the top mm -hmm. of my head, I don't know what that is. But, you know, obviously if it's a library hospital, school university mm -hmm. it, it'll it'll qualify as a community anchor so um if you know if you i can find that information i don't know off the top of my head exactly mm -hmm. what that definition is so yeah because this is something that came from ntia saying do this so they had their criteria of what Correct. they wanted it Correct. to come out how they wanted the yeah so that Makes yeah sense. so i'm going to click back on the the mobile wireless and, and touch touch on this one more time um and the reason why we have the, the mobile app that I'll talk about in a couple minutes is that we see this this footprint and it, we start to kind of wonder, well, you know, when I take my phone around the state, do I really see this level of, of coverage when I go from place to place? And for most people, uh, it's yeah. probably not the case. <laughs> uh, so one thing we've always struggled to do is try and validate some of this information, especially mm -hmm. mobile wireless, because, you know, they provide you the data and you don't really have any idea if it's correct or not. So um, we found a way to do that using a mobile phone app. And let me switch here back to, uh, now let me, I'll come to that in just a second. I want to mention uh, something else on the, on the mapping website. Um, the, the NTIA grant funding for that, that site will, will end in uh, January of this next year. So that, that part of the grant is coming to an end. Um, uh, that's the, the bad news. The good news is that the FCC is going to continue this data collection through what they call Form 477 data. Um, and actually, we're on our last data collection for the NTIA grant right now. It should end at the end of this month. Um, the FCC is running a concurrent one, a concurrent Form 477 collection uh, to kind of mirror and allow that trans transition between the two to happen more smoothly. So the FCC is really going to kind of collect data in much the same way as, as what we've done before. Um, and the good news about that is that the FCC data will eventually be publicly available uh, once they collect it and process it. So our goal and what we plan on doing is continuing the website. We have plans to continue that and we'll just start using the form 477 data once the FCC makes that available. So um, our grant will be ending, but the website will continue. So that's that's kind of the good news good. Yeah. for that. <laughs> and we anticipate that it'll look and operate largely the same. Um, so back to the mobile phone app. Um, we, again, we're trying to figure out ways to validate that footprint. Um, and we're, it's kind of difficult. And, we were approached by this company named Mobile Pulse, uh, and what they have is a phone app that you install on your mobile device, um, and it relies on is you know people that install it on their device to actually kind of collect data for us. So, you know, our challenge is that we're pretty small. There's only a couple of us really on the telecom side that would be able to collect this data, and Two people, it's very difficult to collect statewide data yeah. on where coverage is, especially because I have one phone and it uses one provider. So the idea is to uh, get members of the public to download the free, uh, the free app, uh, install it on their phone, and when they travel around the state, they 
um, collect data for us. Um, so the idea is kind of a crowdsourcing uh, app on your phone. Again, it's free. And the nice thing is that it runs in the background. So once you put it on your phone and uh, start it up, it runs and you don't ever really have to, to see it. Uh, so what when it move when it'll it's smart it's a smart enough app so that it knows when you move from place to place it'll take a measurement if you're sitting in you know your house it's not going to continue to take measurements um, the app is available on all of the major uh, device mobile platforms you know Apple Android and Windows Mobile and again it'll it'll run tests uh, on whatever network you're on so it'll run Wi-Fi tests uh, if you're if you know if you're using Wi-Fi, but again, the interest for us is when you're using your your mobile phone network, uh, it'll run tests then on on the and get speed information there. So you see in the corner, there's an example of what the the, the app looks like when you load it up and it starts to run a speed test. Cool. Um, we do have a question about it. Sure. Um, hold on a sec here, actually. Um, one of our our technology person here. Uh, Michael, you're unmuted. Hi. Um, so I've been running the FCC version of this. Is, is there a benefit to me running this one instead or alongside? Well, that's a really good question. Uh, the, well, the, benefit, the first benefit is that we have not seen yet what the FCC data looks like. So um, there, I guess there are a few advantages, and I'll try to remember to cover them all. The first one is that uh, I think the FCC is limit, limits the number of tests it runs to maybe a couple per day or something like that. It'll run one in the afternoon and run one at, at night or something like that. Um, and ours will, will run, I, I think it's set to run every 10 or 15 minutes or something like that. So that's the first advantage. The second advantage is, is like I said, we haven't seen the FCC data. So we get this data um, and we, we are, ha always have access to that. And then eventually we kind of plan on putting this, some of this information possibly out on our mapping website. Um, the other bit, uh, well, I guess it's not really an issue anymore, but for a long time, the FCC app would only run on Android. They, I think they've come out with an Apple, with an Apple iOS version now, but um, for a long time that was the case. So that's never been an issue with our app. Um, I get, really, the main advantage is that we get access to the to the mobile pulse information where we still haven't seen any of the FCC data yet. So, um, okay, great. Um, quick follow up question: if, if it's running the test that often, what what sort of impact on my like you know data usage is that going to be? Uh, that's an excellent question, uh, and I will get to that in just a minute here. Okay, uh, great. Thank you. <laughs> sure. No, that's a that's a Excellent question. Um, let's see. I'll I'll just go uh, go right to that. I guess uh, there are really what I would call two versions of the of the app. There's the public app, which is what we encourage people to download, um, and then there's a what we call an advanced app. And I'll get to what that is in, in just a minute. Um, first of all, uh, again, another thing I want to mention about the app is that the data that it collects with that public app is anonymous. So you know, there's no way that it can be used to track people or to, you know, figure out any information about them. What it really collects uh, is runs a speed test, so it obviously collects what speed information you get. Um, and the provider that you're using, of course, that's important. Uh, and then a general location. I think the location is within like a quarter mile, so, you know, you're not um, getting tracked down to the, to the, you know, street level or anything like that. It's it's very uh, granular, I guess I'd say. Um, and again, there's no way for uh, the, it's not like it's a live upload. I think the mobile pulse, your phone will collect the information live, and then I, I think it's maybe once or twice a day it'll upload that information to the mobile pulse server. So again, there's a time delay. So anonymous information, there's no, uh, no way that we can, that you can be um, tracked or anything using that, the app. Um, let's see, let me 
advance here. Uh, again, bottom right hand part of the screen, there's also there's another example of your kind of the history of tests. It'll give you a history of your your tests that you run. Um, so here's where I'll I'll address your question that you asked before. There, um, the public version of the app that we're talking about uh, in general, again, free, anonymous collects limited data and then the amount of data it will collect a month is capped at 100 megabytes um, I haven't looked lately at what what the uh, you know what some of the provider offerings are but most people I think they typically have two gigabyte per month data plan so we're talking about five percent of that would be the maximum that the app would use um, you can, if you're concerned about that 100 megabytes a month, you can also go into the settings of the app and adjust that downward. Oh. Uh, you cannot adjust it upward, but you can adjust it downward. Um, if there are people that are interested in, in collecting more data, there, we also have what we call the advanced app. And again, it's still free, but what you would uh, need to do to, have, to get access to that advanced app would be to contact me. Um, you would... I send you an email that invites you to to the advanced app and then you uh, get a login and you can log in through your your the app on your phone and become a, a more what we call an advanced user and really what that involves is that that data cap is raised I think it becomes I, I, I'd have to check what it's set at but I think it's about two gig, gigabytes per month so if you're on an unlimited plan or something and don't really care about your that data cap then that's not an issue it also collects a lot more detailed information. Um, so again, with the public app, everything's anonymous. With the advanced app, that you start to, to provide a little more information. Um, you know, it looks at what tower you're using, what address did you collect it from, and a lot more information. But it allows us to do a little bit uh, more detailed analysis. But you know, really, I'm just as interested in people downloading the public app. That's just as useful for us. Um, mm -hmm. So, but if you have, again, if you have questions about the advanced app or might be interested in, in using that, please feel free to contact me. I'm happy to put you on that. Yeah, just looking at the FAQ on the page for it um, to see if it said anything about that, Michael, and it does even give a little warning about the data use that residents with data plans less than one gigabyte should not install it. Yeah, okay. at all, because then that would be, but like I said, most people are kind of going more Right, than that so, now. yeah. A one gigabyte plan, yeah, that would be 10% of your, you your monthly usage. And again, you can adjust it down. But. And also has a question about which you didn't ask, but I was wondering too, battery impact. And it says that it actually has a, um, a protection thing that if the battery, if your device's battery gets low, it shuts itself off yeah, so that it won't Right, it your won't phone, run your, your phone nice. out of battery, which is nice. I, I can't remember. I think it's 15 or 20% of remaining battery life. Yeah. Um, I think we can adjust. I but think it does that's have a safety thing. That's good. Yeah. So uh, the idea is that it's. I have not enough trouble running phone. my phone down myself. I don't. <laughs> right. <laughs> so do I. Um, this gives you kind of a just a, a visual look at what we're talking about. So in the center, we're talking about that public app. Um, we we have access to a dashboard where we can look at all the all the uh, tests that have run. Um, and then when it if you were to happen to be interested in that. Um, in that advanced app, we I also have access to our dashboard where I can look at our tests that have run off of that. But I, you know, again, I can't see the detail, any detailed information from the public app. So um, I'll back up a little bit. This we started this uh, program with Mobile Pulse almost a year ago. So we've been we've already been collecting information for about a year. Um, and you see on the map kind of the results of what we've got over the past year. Um, this is uh, tests that have been run from all the providers. So we, those are all kind of combined. And you can see that, excuse me, in the east part of the state, we've got pretty good information, pretty good distribution. A lot of it, again, follows major highways and stuff, which we would like to prefer to get some information off those off the beaten path a little bit about where uh, the coverage exists. Um, and then we do have some out west, but you can see some pretty big holes where where we can still use a lot better information. Um, and since we've been doing this for a year, I'd actually have some results that I'll go over here, show you kind of what we're how we're trying to analyze the data. Um, so, for example, here is 
our AT&T measurements uh, over the past year. You can see, again, when you look at it by provider, there's, uh, you'll see that we can use a lot more data from some of the other providers uh, besides Verizon. And, and b believe me, if you have Verizon, we're still happy to get that information, so don't let that dissuade you at all. But um, I actually, my phone is AT&T, so if you, when you look at this map, I can tell you that there are a lot of these that are tested right off of my phone. Um, and it's a little bit hard to see on the screen, but I probably should have changed the graphics a little bit. But you can see speed information um, on, the, on the map. So if you can see red dots, that means we're talking about higher speed. And as you go from red to yellow, that's still pretty good. When you go all the way down to blue, blue is kind of lower end uh, speed information. And in fact, some of that wouldn't even qualify as as a broadband uh, level uh, speed connection at that point. Um, AT&T, you see it's, uh, uh, maybe it's kind of hard to see, but speed is okay when you start to get out on, like on Highway 2 there, that's what that kind of northern piece is, is, is looking at. Uh, speeds drop off quite a bit, you know, that's not unexpected. Um, We'll go through the other carriers, carriers here. But again, you, when you see that map, there's a lot of places that we don't have tests for AT&T. So if you have an AT&T device, we would really love it for you guys to help us collect data in those areas. U.S. Cellular, even fewer tests. A um, lot along I-80 and in in, in the Lincoln Omaha areas, but otherwise not, not a lot of coverage information. So again, would encourage uh, people to... to download if, if you have U.S. Cellular. Verizon, of course, they're kind of the dominant provider in the state. They have really the largest footprint. You can see that we're getting some pretty good information for Verizon. Um, still some holes again that when you look in the Sand Hills, for example, but um, and even in the southeast, kind of down around Beatrice and in between Beatrice and Falls City area, you can see there's some holes there. So again, we um, would like to collect more information for those areas too. Um, Viero, they're a larger provider in the western part of the state. Um, you can see they have, I think they have a pretty good network of towers along I-80. Um, and their their speeds are okay for the, for those areas. So it's, a, again, a little hard to see. But again, more, more uh, tests in the eastern part of the state would be good for that, for Viero as well. <clears throat> Sprint, um, Sprint's pretty concentrated around Lincoln and Omaha areas. Uh, there's a couple tests otherwise, but not a lot. So again, you can use more tests for Sprint. And then, uh, so the second thing that we started to do besides just looking at speeds was that we started to compare uh, the speed information that was, we received from the test with what the providers uh, advertise as their speeds for an area. So, um, for example, you see AT&T here, where we only look at tests that are within that, those coverage areas of what they provide. And um, the colors, I don't, didn't have a legend, didn't put a legend up, but um, the more red you get, that means that their, their speeds are above what their advertised, uh, advertised speeds are. When you start to get to green and blue, that means that they're, or actually, I think it's gray and black. You those are speeds that are below their advertised um, speeds for those areas. So um, I'll show you some more information on that. U.S. Cellular, you kind of see what, they're, what they claim is their footprint there. Um, I think they see speeds. Uh, I think I, I have a, a, a little spreadsheet at the bottom here that shows the information in that way. But you can get an, get an idea of what the, what the uh, data tests are starting to look like when you compare it to their advertised speeds. Um, Verizon is actually quite good. I mean, we see, you know, if you, I don't know how easy it is to see again, but um, they're, they usually perform pretty close to or, or even above what they advertise as their speeds. There are a couple holes where that's not the case. Um, if you see gray and black, that's, that's where that is, and that's usually in smaller pockets, but uh, by and large, they, we see pretty good speed information from them. Viero is kind of interesting. That a lot of their dots are gray and black, and 
it's not necessarily because the speeds are bad, but again, we're comparing it with what they advertise. So they advertise a pretty high speed, um, and people aren't necessarily seeing those speeds when they when they run the test. So that's kind of interesting, but it, uh, I'm kind of trying to figure out how to look at that a little more closely because when I look at their speeds, they're not not bad. They just look bad in comparison to what they're advertising. So. Uh, Sprint has a pretty small footprint for where they actually have towers, kind of, again, concentrated around Lincoln and Omaha, and, and you see what they're showing for uh, how they compare to their, their advertised speed tiers there. Not too, not too bad. Here's the kind of the graphic uh, look at that. Um, another thing that we've started to look at is how do speeds compare in urban areas versus rural areas. Mm -hmm. um, we've I should mention, I don't think I mentioned this, we have about 20, over 23,000 tests statewide now. You can see the urban and rural distribution, about 13 and 13,000 uh, have, tests have been run in, in areas outside of city limits and, and about almost 11,000 have been run in, in urban, urban areas or in the city limits. That's kind of how we define rural and urban uh, in that setting. Um, so you see on the, on the, uh, chart there how these uh, providers have performed so for example on top AT&T their their speed in urban areas is about five megabytes per second download we're all talk we're talking download speeds here sorry I probably should have specified that but um, in rural areas it's about 4.1 megabytes per second and then the last column shows how over all of their all of their measurements how they perform against what they advertise so Typically, AT&T performs slightly higher than what they advertise. So their average speed tier is about is less than a speed tier higher than what they advertise. So a positive number means that they're typically meeting what they advertise. A negative number means they're not. So you see, for example, Vero, they have a negative number, which means that their speeds are usually below what they advertise, and the same for Sprint. But it's, you know, minus 0.6, you're pretty, they're pretty, pretty close, close to what yeah. they're what they're advertising. So that gives you some idea of, of what we're trying to do and how, uh, how we're using the app. Um, let's see, I think that pretty much covers what I wanted to cover on the Mobile Pulse app. Um, again, the success of the app really depends on how many people we can get, load, get to download it and use it and how many people we can get to that use it throughout the state. So I think it kind of at this point our, our goal is to really get more statewide distribution. You know, we have, like you saw, pretty good info um, in Lincoln and Omaha, that area. But we need people with different providers besides Verizon um, and then people that are more distri distributed throughout the state. So, um, again, that if you have questions or... Um, need more information, or if you are interested in becoming an advanced user, please uh, contact me. My phone number and email are up there on the, on the screen. Um, and I think that pretty much covers broadband for now. <laughs> cool. Um, anybody have any other questions? We had some, you know, during the show um, while you were talking. So if anybody has any other last minute questions, um, go ahead and type them in. Or if you want to be unmuted, let me know and I can unmute you. Uh, well, we do. <laughs> uh, we've got three of our commission staff are watching in another meeting room upstairs, as I mentioned earlier, um, and two of them just installed the app <laughs> to their phones Great. while we're That's here. Good. So, and I was actually going to do that on mine too, as well as the FCC one. Um, I've got my phone here. I wasn't going to do it while I was in here. So I'll, I'll get to it. <laughs> it you know, um, I will so say the that third it, person just doesn't have her phone with her. So, oh, no, that's fine. I'll get to it. <laughs> I will say that. Um, I was, it was interesting to hear that you had downloaded the FCC app because that's one thing that we're not really sure about is how many people have actually downloaded mm -hmm. that app. So I added um, a link to the show notes um, in our delicious account, too, that I looked up the FCC one. Oh, so great. if anyone's interested in that one as well, um, I've got a link to the mobile pulse for Nebraska, but also the FCC speed test. Speed, yeah, I think they call it FCC yeah. speed test. And again, you know, it's... it's it. we've, we've talked with the FCC, and they do plan on making that data available. Uh, but again, it's been 
I don't know, eight or nine months since they uh, released that Sorry, speed really? test app, and we still haven't seen anything. Typically, they are a little they slower anything, yeah. on releasing that information. Michael says he also has the FCC Sam Knows router at home. Hmm. What is, I'm going to. I'm not familiar with that. No. Michael, what is that? I unmuted you. Um, that was a program that uh, the FCC was basically doing the same thing the mobile router was, or the, the mobile app was doing, but for home access. So oh, okay. the, the FCC was collecting data. They, they installed a customized uh, firmware on the router. Um, they're still collecting the data, but I don't think they're sending out the routers anymore. Oh, okay. Um, and, okay. and it's like samnose.fcc.gov or something like that where you can get the data. Do you know how long they've been doing that? Has that been... I've had that router for probably a good four years now. Oh, okay. wow. I mean, it, it, it's been several years. You know, the, the FCC is kind of, um, well, the, the NTIA, I think that was maybe the goal of, of, of uh, the NTIA project was to kind of um, collect similar data to what you'd, you'd be providing with that router on a, you know, a lot, lar a lot uh wider, uh, what do I want to say, on a, on a nationwide uh, scale, you know, so you're, um, I, I don't know, I guess that's just, that's sort of my, my first uh, instinct is that the, the project that we've been working on is kind of uh, an extension of that, of whatever they were trying to accomplish with that, to collect, in other words, to collect information about where uh, broadband is available and what types and uh, that sort of thing. So. Yeah, I, I like it because I've, I've, I mean, I've been contributing data, but they also send me my own personal monthly report on how my home broadband is doing. So I, oh, I've used that for troubleshooting. Neat. Cool. Very good. All right. Anybody else have any other questions, comments, thoughts? Probably not. If they did, they were talking. Okay, cool. All right, then I think that will wrap it up for today's show. Thank you very much, Colin, sure, for being here with us today. Sure. Coming down, what are we, two floors up? You guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm fun. downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so that was great, yeah. Um, show's being recorded. It'll be available afterwards. I've got his slides as well. So for all those maps and things, you want to zoom in better on those, we'll have the slides up available as well. And I've added to the delicious links that we have here, the mobile broadband map, information about the mobile pulse, and the... Um, FCC one there so that you can um, access those as well. So I'm going to steal back the it here and we can get the thing. Sure. Um, that will wrap it up for today's show. And um, as I said, it'll be recorded and put onto our website here um, in our archives probably by later this afternoon. Um, Okay, next week, and I'm going to get help for this. So I hope you join us next week when it is our monthly tech talk uh, with Michael Sowers, who you've just been listening to um, asking questions here, um, the Michael's Art Technology Innovation Librarian. And he has a show coming up where all I know is the name of it. I don't know anything more about it. So, uh, Michael, can you tell us what's happening on the show next week? Uh, yes, we're going to have two guests, uh, one from an organization, mobilebeacon.org, and from a library that's participating in this. Uh, I think you have an R in there, Krista. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, Mobile Beacon supplies 4G wireless hotspots to uh, libraries and nonprofits, and then libraries can get them and check them out to uh, patrons so that if patrons have computers at home but no internet access, they can get a kind of a mobile uh, uh, internet access. So we're going to be uh, talking about that program. Okay. Yeah, I've heard of libraries doing that, loaning the hotspots out, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm on too many computers here. Cool. All right. So if you're interested in learning more about that, um, getting the hotspots, hot um, that will be the topic of our Tech Talk next week. Um, and you can touch on it for any of our other shows coming up. Um, also, if you are a Facebook user, Encompass Live is on Facebook. We have a Facebook page there. You can um, like us on Facebook. You get notifications of when our recordings are available. Um, I give reminders of when our current show is starting up, so you can log in on the fly if you didn't pre-register for a show. So if you are big on Facebook, please do go ahead and like us there. Um, other than that, that will wrap it up for today's show. Thank you very much for attending, and we'll see you next week.
拜。